Hello my fellow chef knives enthusiasts. In this video I am showing you my Yukurusaki Hawao VG10 Rainbow Damascus Guto 240mm. If you are into knives like I am then you already know that Yukurusaki is one of the youngest and most talented blacksmiths in Japan. And he is mostly known for his amazing and unique Chuchime patterns. Not only does Kurosaki tempt me with the beautiful looks of his blades, their performance keeps me coming back for more. Hence me owning 5 Yu Kurosaki knives by now. I have a Yuyo Chukabocho, a Fujin Petty, a Senko Bunka, a Senko Buto, and this Haao Buto. I actually didn't even know that Yukurusaki was making Rainbow Damascus blades at all. I just thought of him as that Tsuchime guy. The original handle was a wenge handle or wenji handle with a black buffalo horn ferrule. Somehow the handle didn't feel right. It was just a little bit too thick and I didn't like the feel of the wenji in my hand. So I had Josh from Let's Handle This make a thinner handle from quilted maple wood, pearl resin and copper and brass spacers. I thought that using copper and brass in the handle was a no-brainer for this colored Damascus blade. I had my friend Dennis from Denisu Cutlery re-handle the knife for me. The original handle was glued so we had to heat up the handle to soften the glue. Then it was not too difficult to whack off that handle and replace it with the custom handle. Dennis made sure to align the blade perfectly. I'm not a big fan of all those flashy looking custom handles in general, but in this case I think the handle and blade go really well with each other. The Hawao series features elegant and beautiful blades with a Hawao motif. Hawao comes from Chinese mythology symbolizing yin and yang and the duality of the universe. It is the most sacred bird in the Japanese pantheon. This bird seems to incorporate parts of several creatures. The beak of a rooster, the jaw of a swallow, the head of a pheasant, the neck of a snake, the legs of a crane and the tail of a peacock. The Hawao is a change in direction and style from Yukurusaki-san by combining alternating layers of copper and brass. The very distinctive layering is designed to invoke a vision of a phoenix rising from the flames, says the description of the Hawao series on Cutting Edge Knives website. I like to think I have a vivid imagination, but I don't see it. What I can see is a fusion between VG10 steel, copper and brass making this a pretty nice colored Damascus blade. But a phoenix rising from the flames? I don't. I don't see it. I just can't. I do like how Yukurusaki always gives a name to his knife series, which refer to some natural phenomena or something from Japanese culture. And thanks to Yukurusaki, I now know of the Hawao bird in the first place. Never heard of it before I bought this knife. But isn't this just a, another Rainbow Damascus blade though? As far as I know, there are only a couple of brands slash knife makers that make these Rainbow Damascus blades from Japan. So you have Yukurusaki, Takeshi Saji, Tsukasa Hinaura and uh, Nigara. So those are four different Japanese forges that make Rainbow Damascus blades. But other than that, I think I've never seen any other Japanese bladesmith make these Rainbow Damascus blades. I have a few Rainbow Damascus blades already. And this Yukurusaki Hawao blade does look very similar to this Rainbow Damascus blade, which is by Takeshi Saji. See how similar? Saji didn't name his Rainbow Damascus series of blades anything other than Rainbow Damascus blade. By the way, this Saji Rainbow Damascus blade Bunka is a rather heavy, stiff workhorse grind. 
The Kurosaki is much lighter and more like a laser grind. This knife is so much a laser that it should have been attached to a freaking shark in that Austin Powers movie. So to be honest, as much as I like the subject Hawao being connected to a Japanese chef knife, I don't see it clearly translated to the blade. Perhaps it's more like a Rorschach test. Does this look like a Hawao bird to you? Yu Kurosaki's other series of blades have names which meaning are clearly visibly translated to the blades. His Yuyo soft rhyme eyes Chuchime pattern actually looks like soft rhyme eyes. His Senko Chuchime pattern actually looks like the sparkles coming from a Japanese Senko incense stick. His Raijin Chuchime pattern, Raijin meaning God of Thunder, actually looks a bit like thunderbolts. I could go on, but I think I've made my point. This Hawao Rainbow Damascus pattern actually does not look like a Hawao bird, in my humble opinion. That being said, the name of the series did give me the inspiration to customize the Saya that I use for this Yukurusaki Hawao Gyuto. Needless to say, I wanted to have a depiction of an actual Hawao bird on the Saya. If I can't see the Hawao bird theme on the blade, I might as well put that freaking bird on my Saya. I asked my talented friend Nadia van Luik to hand paint this Saya for me. I have met Nadia almost two decades ago through our shared love for art and hip-hop music. She's a mother of two children with Dutch TV chef London Loy and makes a lot of food-related art. So in my book, she was the only and perfect artist to commission for this Saya customization. And she didn't prove me wrong, because she did a marvelous job. I love how she positions the actual halal bird on the Saya, so you can see it in almost full glory and how the tail feathers turn over the spine of the Saya and are spreading on the backside of the Saya. And I love how Nadia gave my halal bird chef knives on its tail feathers. Very appropriate to the theme. Also adding Yukurusaki's name on the bottom right there in the name of the series. Oh wow. On the spine she signed the Saya with her name. And yeah, I also like the green background color on the Saya. It, it gives the look of the Saya, the handle and the blade all together a pretty refined look. But enough about the looks of the blades, the handle and the saya. What about the geometry and the performance of this knife? At the end of the day, this is still a tool, should be used, and it's nice to have a tool that works really well. The grind of this blade is right up my street. Very much a laser, it's really thin behind the edge. It's just a really thin blade. It's definitely thinner than my Masamoto KS, which is my most used Gyuto in the collection because it hits the perfect sweet spot between a laser and a workhorse. The Shukurusaki Hawao is definitely not a workhorse, so if you like thin blades, like let's say a Takeda or the Shibata Kotetsu Battleship, then you also like this Shukurusaki Hawao series. The blade is so thin, so light, so nimble. It just flies through vegetables like there is no friction. I'm not a big fan myself of cutting uh, paper with my knife or showing off the sharpness by doing these, you know, tomato, grape cuts, but okay. Just for this one time, I will cut a tomato like I would never cut a tomato. Just to show you how thin and sharp this blade is. The 
the skin of a tomato, no chance. This Kuto just bites through the skin with no problem and then just glides through the tomato. Like it's not even there. I mean, I'm not even using any pressure. It's just crazy how sharp this knife is. It's, oh man. Boy, this knife is a laser. And with a thin laser grind blade like this, I'm really happy that I have my Asahi cutting board, which is a uh, synthetic rubber cutting board that gives great feedback for a thin laser knife like this. It's hard enough to not let the blade catch into the board and it's soft enough to be gentle to the extremely sharp and thin blade. So uh, just as a side note, I highly recommend these synthetic rubber cutting boards by Asahi. I also have a Asahi Barker a synthetic rubber cutting board, which is a lot thinner and so flexible cutting board but the density of that cutting board is way softer than the other Asahi cutting board that I have and when I use my Yukurusaki Hawao Gyuto on this Asahi Parker cutting board it definitely catches into the soft rubber so you definitely want to have a good cutting board when you use a thin laser grind knife like this. I have this knife for about four years now and I remember I only had to sharpen it a few times. So the edge retention is also pretty good of this Fiji 10 steel. I have to say I, I never used it as a workhorse knife at all. It definitely has seen some action, but most of the action was done with care and patience. So this knife was never abused, never used in a hurry or with haste in a professional kitchen. Only when I cook for myself at home or for my guests during a private chef gig. My point is, if you're looking for a workhorse, look somewhere else. Before I will uh, wrap up this video, I want to uh, give you a short notification on something that is going on in my life right now. I am about to start my own uh, restaurant, meaning that I'm going to have uh, my own kitchen inside of a huge venue called Pong House of Ping here in Amsterdam. The name kind of gives the concept away. It's a huge venue with a lot of table tennis tables, a, a huge bar and a huge kitchen which will be on my wings and I got carte blanche from the owner so I can serve my food uh, exactly the way I want it and whatever I want. I'm telling you this because I have started my channel and making knife videos during uh, the COVID pandemic since uh, yeah, I was just like many of us stuck at home uh, out of a job and having a lot of time on my hands so well reading books about knives and being active in the knife community uh, yeah, there was a lot of time for that back then but as we all know uh, the pandemic is uh, mostly hopefully over and yeah opening this new restaurant will keep me occupied for at least five days a week wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday um yeah so me, i won't have a lot of spare time on my hands for making these videos i find it a lot of fun to make these videos and uh, i learn a lot from making these videos because every video on the knives that i have every video that i've made on my knives were little studies to me like i would study the background of the knife the makers and so i learned a lot in the process of making these videos about my own knives and i love sharing that knowledge and my experience with these knives a lot it's just that it takes a lot of time to make these videos i've been uh, let's say that every video is 
I put at least like 20 to 30 hours in researching and getting as much information about the knives as possible. Then uh, shooting the footage and the editing is a lot of work. Finding all the little memes and other images that I use for the videos. But yeah, well, it just takes a lot of time and I'm not sure if I'm going to have the energy and time as soon as I start my restaurant, which will be at the end of April. So yeah, bear with me. I, whenever I do get the chance, I will continue to make videos about my knives. It's just not gonna, going to be as frequent as uh, the past five months, I guess, where I put up a video every, almost every week, at least every two weeks. Just so you know, I'm not going to pull the plug out of my channel. It's just that I, you know, life happens when you're not making YouTube videos.